Hello friends, welcome. I'm your friend, your host Roy. Welcome to this presentation from Rising Power. Friends, you know that we have been discussing series 1 where we are exploring real numbers. Today is Webisode number 22 and today friends we are going to be looking at some of the applications of the theorems we have been learning in the last two or three, I think last three presentations, uh, which is mostly about rational numbers and when you know you have a rational number that has a terminating decimal representation or non-terminating but repeating decimal representation. So we did learn some theories, some theorems about the, that particular aspect of rational numbers and we are going to apply some of those theorems into solving real problems. So that's it friends, uh, let's get into it. Now what are the theorems? I'm not going to repeat the theorems again but we specifically looked at th three theorems and as and when we solve the problems we are going to come back and revisit these theorems. This was the first theorem, this was the second theorem and then we had a third theorem. So we essentially had theorem 1 and 2 which talked about when we have a rational number with terminating decimal representation or expansion and then we had the third theorem that talks about when we will have non-terminating but repeating decimal expansion for a rational number. So friends here we have a set of questions. Um, do the rational numbers below have terminating or non-terminating repeating decimal expansion? So this is our question and we have a uh, quite a few of problems here. So I think it is important to remember that first of all we are looking to express the the given rational number in the form of p by q where pq are co prime that means we are going to basically remove all the common factors and they will have no common factors with with the exception of 1 and we are also looking for q to be in the form of 2 to the power m times 5 to the power n, right? If we find the q in this form, then it will have terminating decimal expansion. If q is not going to be of this form, which was the third theorem, we know that our rational number p by q will have non-terminating repeating decimal expansion. So with that in mind, let's look into it each of the problems. So 12 divided by 2 to 5. So the number uh, in the numerator, this is actually an even number. And um, let's, let's write this. So we have 12. We can write 12 divided by, here we have 2 to 5. Now 2 to 5, if you add the numbers, so 2 plus 2, 4 plus 5, 9, this can be divisible by 3, right? So if you, so I think we can write 2 to 5 as 3 times, 3 7s are 21 and 3 5s are 15. So we can, we can write this as this. Now 3 and this will get cancelled out, 3 4s are 12. So we have 4 by 75. So 75, so we can write 75 as, 75 can be written as 3 times 25, which is 5 squared. So what we have here is, if you look at the denominator, so at this point there are no common factors between the numerator and denominator, right? Because 4 is nothing but 2 to the power 2, so there are no common factors. And if you look at the denominator, this is not of this form. It means what? It means that this particular number will be a rational number, but it will not be terminating. That means this will be non-terminating, non-terminating, but repeating decimal expansion. So in short, I'm just writing it like NTR, non-terminating, repeating. Because in order for this to have terminating, you know, decimal expansion, I need to have 
2 or 5 or both, I cannot have any other prime factor in the denominator. Let's look at this one. So, this is 2 divided by 60 is nothing but 2 times 30. Right? So, 2 and 2 will cancel out again and you have 1 by 30 which is 3 times 2 times 3 times 2 times 5. So, again I have this factor which is 3. Remember, in order for me to have, so, so then we will again, this one will be non-terminating repeating dec uh, decimal expansion. It will be a rational number, but this will be non-terminating repeating. Why? Again, I have my, my denominator uh, does not have only 2 or 5 or both. There is 3 as the additional prime factor. Uh, how about the next one? Next one is 9 by 55. 55 is 5 times 11. Again, I am seeing something which is other than 2. So, this will be again a non-terminating but repeating. Non-terminating, repeating decimal expansion, non-terminating, repeating decimal expansion. What about this one? Here clearly we have 7, 20, 21 can be written as 7 times 3, 7 times 3 and denominator is 2 to the power 2 times 5 to the power 3. So clearly uh, this is all uh, you know in the, they are all in a co-prime form because there are no common factors in the numerator and denominator. And also we see that the denominator has only 2 and 5 as factors. So, this indeed will be terminating decimal expansion. So, this is the first one where we will have a terminating decimal expansion. And friends, this is a lot of fun because you can actually, you know, solve each one of them by using the long division process and you can verify. See how without actually doing the division, simply by looking at a fraction, we are able to tell how the decimal expansion will look like. So, let us let's, let's uh, continue on. 35 by 40. So, 35 by 40, you can write 35 as 5 times 7. 40 can be written as 5 times 8. So, 5 and 5 will cancel out and you have 7 by 8. This is interesting to note because 8 is nothing but 2 to the power 3. So, this will again be terminating. Why? Because remember, if I have my denominator as either 2 or 5 or both, any of the three cases, I will have a terminating decimal expansion. So, this one will also be terminating decimal expansion. Similarly, if you look at this one, this is interesting. So, here you have, I think, let us see, let us make sure that we have enough space. Now, this number, numerator, 1 plus 2 plus 6, this is going to be 2 plus 1 is 3 plus 6 is 9. So, we can actually divide this by 3. So, that means 3 will be a factor here. So, you can write this as 3 times, let us see, 3 fours are 12 and 3 twos are 6. I am trying to find out the prime factorization on the fly and in my denominator I have 2 to the power 2 multiply by 3 to the power 1 multiply by 5 to the power 8. So, in this case friends I have 3 in the numerator, 3 in the denominator, they will cancel out. So, what I am left with here is 2 to the power 2 to the power 2. Now, 42 can be divided by 2, right? So, 42 will be 21 times 2. So, 1, 2 will cancel out. So, your denominator still will be of the form this. Hence, this will also have terminating decimal expansion, right? 1 by 25, clearly it is 1 divided by 5 square. So, this will be, this will be terminating 
decimal expansion. Now 99 can be 9 times 11. 30 is 3 times 2 times 5. Here 3 and 3 will cancel out. So you will have 3 times 11 by 2 times 5. So denominator again has only 2 and 5 terminating. This is important friends that look at some of these examples like this one. Um, I think and there was one more where uh, I think it was this one. Even though you have a 3 or any other factor in the denominator, right? You have here 3 and you had 3 here. When we do the prime factorization for the numerator, the the factor 3 denominator actually gets cancels out. So again, the P by Q has to be in a co-prime mode where there are no common factors. So it is important to actually do the prime factorization for both numerator and denominator and then make sure that you cancel out all the common factors. Then you evaluate 2 to the power m times 5 to the power n. So let's look at the last, I think the second from the last 11 you know is a prime number and then we have unfortunately 3 here and then 2 times 5 which is basically 10 times 2. So this will be non-terminating repeating. Why? Because I have here in my denominator 3 and I am not able to cancel this out because 11 is a prime. If my numerator were 33 in this case then 3 and 33 would have cancelled out. But the given the way it is, no, it will be non-terminating repeating decimal expansion. Similarly, for the last one, 9, I can write this as 3 times 3. Uh, for 15, I can write this as 3 times 5. And here, 3 and 3 will cancel out. So 3 by 5, and yes, this will be terminating. So friends, again, we saw that simply by looking at the the fraction we can tell the decimal expansion will be repeating or non-repeating, non-terminating, but repeating, right? Now, let's take a look at some of these kind of questions. The decimal expansion of some real numbers are given to you. Find out if the real numbers are rational that is, if they can be expressed in this form or not. If they are rational, what can we infer about the prime factors of the denominator? So we have been given three numbers. Let's take a look at each one of them one by one. So for the first number, clearly, this is a terminating decimal expansion. So what we can say? We can say that this can be written as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, divided by how many zeros? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. You don't actually have to do any of that. This is clearly going to be terminating decimal expansion and this is indeed a rational number which is expressed in the form P by Q and the for the denominator, its factors will have 2 or 5 or both. The prime factor for the denominator will be 2 or 5 or both. Simply by looking at this, we can tell that. How about the next one? Whenever you have a bar, it means that the the portion which is actually underlined or we, we should say there is a line on top of those numbers, they repeat. In other words, what this is saying to us is, this is 1, 2, 3, point, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, then 7, 8, 1, 8, 3, 7, 8, 1, sorry, 7, 9, 7, 7, 9, 1, 8, 3. This part is repeating. So it will be 7, 9, 1, 8, 
8, 3, 7, 9, 1, 8, 3. It will go on and on and on. So what does it tell us? So immediately, what it tells us is, yes, this is a rational number, which can be expressed in the form of p by q. However, because it has a non-terminating but repeating decimal expansion, the prime factorization of q is not of the form two to the power m. Times five to the power n, where m and n are non-negative integers. It is not of that form. There may be, there definitely are other prime factors in the denominator. So when you actually write it in a form of p by q, and you find out the prime factorization for q, it will contain other prime factors other than two and five. Or that is, it will not have only two or five or both. There will be other prime factors in the denominator. So simply by looking at this, we can say that. Now, what about the last one? So here, if you look at this very closely, you will notice that the so you have one zero one zero one point. You look at this two zero nine, then you have two zero zero nine, then you have two zero zero nine. So essentially, what is happening here is that, you know, in every instance you have an extra zero added on. That means clearly this is a non-terminating. So this is a non-terminating number. We know that, but it is also important to understand that it is also non-repeating. Because this is not repeating. You you don't have two zero nine two zero nine two zero nine. The pattern is continuously expanding, so we have a situation where we have a non-terminating and non-repeating decimal expansion. So this is an example of irrational number. So this is an example of irrational number, and we cannot represent this in the form p by q. So friends, these are some of the examples. of the type of questions that you may be getting on the specific theorems discussing the rational numbers and the decimal expansions whether terminating or non terminating repeating or non terminating non repeating for rational numbers